Hi, I'm Victoria. Welcome or welcome back. Today I've decided to make a quilted laptop sleeve. So this is just to protect my laptop when it's in my bag and to keep all the cords together. I almost bought one, but then I thought, I bet I can make that. So we're gonna try, but I'm gonna be working with fabric scraps today. Actually, people sell them. It's crazy. Uh, these are somebody's scraps from a project they did and had no use for them, so they sell them. I'm really not sure how much fabric is there, so once I get it out, we'll look about how much we have and determine if I need to pull from my fabric scraps because I have a bag full as well. And I'm going for more of a patchwork look. I'm gonna be making my own pattern, so let's get started. I started by getting the fabric out and seeing how much we actually had to work with. I decided to not work with the yellow fabric. There wasn't a lot of it and it didn't match the floral print very well. There is a mystery stain on this one and it really grossed me out. All these fabrics are all different materials and thicknesses and stretch. I'm not really sure what the floral print is made of. It's almost a slick material, but not. And it made a weird noise whenever I sewed it. I've been making patterns more recently and every time I feel like I get the hang of it, I mess them up. I measure my laptop and cut the paper out and label it. This is where I messed up, but I'm glad it's just paper and not the actual fabric. Oh no, wait, hang on. I looked at it wrong. <laughs> Design. Sometimes you just have to laugh it off and laugh at yourself because it really wasn't a big deal. I was going for a pointed edge here and if you've looked at the thumbnail, that's not what I ended up with, but it's totally okay to change your pattern during your project. And it ended up looking amazing. Oh no, shoot. I'm gonna use this dress as my lining and enjoy listening to mine and my mom's phone call. I'm sure. Oh. Hey, really? <laughs> Who would put that sticker on their car? Oh, I know a few. So, Subway's moving out of the building because <laughs> it's falling down. Where are they moving to? Literally. Where's Subway moving to? It's a busy little place right now. Oh, it's four o'clock. People just keep wanting to run over me. <sighs> I've never done patchwork like this before. I started off by laying the pieces on the paper that I had cut out earlier for the pattern and got my machine out and just decided to start. I really didn't have a plan at this point. This is the part where I didn't think all the way through. I didn't leave room for seam allowances anywhere. So I ended up adding fabric to all the sides, which is okay because it's patchwork. And sometimes my brain doesn't work. Trying to sew multiple edges together and I had to seam rip the front. This is going to be the flap in the front and I think it's looking cute. There were just so much repetitive sewing and I did get frustrated. What in the world? Ugh. The hardest part about sewing is actually your machine. When it keeps messing up and you don't know why and you don't know how to fix it and you start to take it apart and it's not always easy to figure out what the problem is. The mishaps in sewing is what takes the longest. At this point, I started to cut my patchwork pieces bigger. It made it a lot easier and I didn't have so much to sew together. And it still looks really good. After I got all the patchwork sewn together, I cut out the batting. This is the material that goes in the middle of quilts, and it's a great extra padding for my laptop. I tend to cut the lining and batting a bit bigger, just so I have room if I mess up. You can always cut extra off, but it's really hard to add it if there's not enough. When actually quilting, I used two fingers to measure the width of each row. This is a lot easier than having a measuring tape. I can just slap my fingers on there. This gives me equally spaced lines without having to use anything extra. Ooh. 
After I got all the pieces quilted individually, I started to sew them together. I started with the back piece, with the flap, then I moved on to adding the front piece to that and adding the pocket. Looking back, I should have added the pocket before adding the front to the back, but that's just a future reference. Flipping it right side out to make sure everything looks good and finishing the edges with the pink material. It's almost done. It's looking really good. I love the pocket in the front. It's going to carry my charger and other things I need for my laptop. Now we just need to add the button. Attempting to cut the hole in this fabric was tricky. It was so thick, it was a challenge, and it took me longer than it should have. I actually broke my needle last night. This is the third needle I've gone through in the past couple of months, so I had a pack on hand. I'm setting my machine to a zigzag stitch and carefully stitching around the raw edges. Cutting off all the loose threads, and there were a lot. And whatever fabric this is, the strings just love to stick to it. The first thing I ever learned how to sew was actually buttons. My mom taught me whenever I was younger, and little by little, I learned how to sew more things. Got everything lined up and started hand stitching. I may have overdone it, but I wanted to make sure this button was very secure. But this is an accurate representation of what my apartment looks like when I do crafts. It just gets messy and my apartment is not that big. This is actually my next project I'm gonna do, so stay tuned for that video. I picked up all the big fabric that I could and paper and thread and saved what I could to put in my fabric scrap pile. Folded all the fabric and put it away, cleaned off my table and wiped it down. Getting a Dyson vacuum was the best investment I've ever made in my life. I really start to sound old when my favorite thing that I own is a vacuum. This vacuum not only cleans my house, my car, it's lightweight but powerful. It has so many attachments. It's cordless. It's the best. And look what all it picked up. Thanks for coming along with me to make my quilted laptop case. This whole project took me six hours. I thought it was gonna take two or three, but making a pattern and especially doing patchwork takes a little longer than normal, but I'm very, very happy with it. Very happy if my laptop has a safe home for whenever I travel and a pocket to put all the cords in. Let's talk about costs. This project was actually free. I did not purchase the scrap fabric, someone did, and they gave it to me, and I used fabric from my scrap pile, already had the thread, and the needle, and the buttons. So technically, this was a free project. I didn't watch a video on this one, I did look at some Pinterest guides, but other than that, I just pieced it together myself. The quilted case is definitely not perfect, but all in all, I'm very, very happy with the end result. It's a little bit more pink than I imagined it would be but I love it just the same. I've challenged myself this year to make as many gifts as I can, and this was a little gift to myself. As you guys saw, I already have a plan for my next project, so be sure to stick around for that. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.